Hey, welcome back today to Wings Eagles Ministry, where I want to talk to you about prayer. And I want to share with you something uh, actually from a mighty, mighty man of God. And just sort of share with you that I disagree with him on a major point. But I want to say in the beginning that you're going to find that you're going to listen to a lot of people, or you have listened to a lot of people, maybe over your lifetime, or you will, and a lot of preachers and teachers, uh, maybe your pastor, maybe maybe your um, some just some sort of teacher that you've been under, and you'll find out you will not agree with that person on everything. You might agree with them out of nineteen out of twenty things, but there might be one that you don't exactly see eye to eye with. And as my pastor told me one time, he said, "As long as you see on the basics of God, as long as you're." As long as we agree on the main principles of God and salvation, he said, you know, we're not always going to see eye to eye on every little thing. So I'm not here to down the person I'm getting ready to talk about because I have several of his books and I enjoy reading them. They really do increase a person's faith. Uh, I've read them more than once, but, um, but this just sort of goes to show you that you don't definitely agree with everybody all the time. So I'm talking today, and I'm going to tell you something uh, that was uh, a strong belief for Smith Wigglesworth. Now, Smith Wigglesworth was a British evangelist who was very influential in the early Pentecostal movement. He was born in 1859 and lived the year 1947. Now, he was one of the first preachers to practice the teachings of uh, Pentecostalism just prior to the Azusa Street Revival, and he had a particular message in his preaching and teaching, and that was faith and healing. He was big on that. When you read up on him and you read the, the articles on him in his own books, uh, you you will find that, that he had a strong faith in God and a strong belief, and he had a gift of healing in which you know, he prayed for people, and he prayed that God would heal them, and many were healed. Okay, now, the thing is, though, and here's what I want to bring out. I know when I was reading one time, and I thought, I was reading one of his books, and I thought, I don't exactly agree with this part, though. And, uh, again, you know, you don't, you're not going to agree eye to eye with everybody. But the main thing I want to do is I want to be able to look at the Bible and say, the reason why I don't agree with this person is because the Bible says this. And to be honest with you, I'll, I'll be completely honest with you. Sometimes I wonder how uh, Wigglesworth didn't said what he said based on what the Word of God teaches. Okay. But uh, anyway, we'll go ahead and read it to you. Okay. Now here's what, and, and as I said, he was a big, he was, he focused his primary teaching and preaching, of course, he preached on salvation, teaching people that they needed Christ in their life, but he was mainly into faith healing, you know, faith deliverance from, from the affliction that might have somebody bound. But here's what he said, and uh, he said this one night at one of his meetings, uh, and it said, on one occasion, Wigglesworth declared to the sick, I'll only pray for you once. To pray twice is unbelief. Now, that's what Wigglesworth said. You can Google it. You can look it up online. If you've got his books, you can, you'll notice in his books. I mean, it, it does say that. Wigglesworth said to pray for one, uh, pray for something twice is unbelief. It goes on to say, the second night, this is the night following he made this statement, there was a man that approached the altar to receive prayer again, and Wigglesworth recognized him and said, Didn't I pray for you last night? He said, You are full of unbelief. Get off this platform. So he ran the person off the platform, and he had done said the night before that if you pray for something twice, then it's unbelief, and that's why you didn't get it the first time. This is what I'm saying by the title of this video. I do not agree on this area with Smith Wigglesworth. And I'll tell you why. Because the Bible does not teach that. We can read in the Word of God, and it's important for you to know today that 
you can increase your faith and you can build your faith in God. But if you're praying for something, no, don't give up on it. If God hadn't answered your prayer yet, it doesn't hurt you to continue to pray for it. If God hasn't saved that loved one you might be praying for yet, keep praying. If God hasn't healed that person yet, keep praying for him. If God hasn't given you that job promotion you're praying about, keep praying, keep asking God, and he will. If God hasn't done whatever it is specifically in your life that you might be praying about, don't give up. Don't say, I have unbelief or I'm full of unbelief. The way this statement read, you could very well do that and it could hurt a person in their faith in Christ. And that's one thing that the scripture teaches that, or it does not teach, is pray once and that's it. Now, are we to have faith? Yes, we are, okay? But there are different uh, places in the Word of God, and I'm going to read to you a couple. Let's look at the Old Testament one place here. Let's look at 1 Kings chapter number 41. I want to read to you about a man named Elijah. Now, the Bible tells us that there was a time that Elijah told Ahab, he said, he said, get up Ahab, because he said, there's a sound of an abundance of rain. So it said, Elijah went up to the top of the Mount Carmel, and he took a servant with him, okay? So he told the servant, you wait over there, and he said, I'm going to go pray. So he told the servant, he got down and he began to pray for God that he would send rain. And he told the servant in uh, 1 Kings chapter number 41, he said, go up now and look toward the sea. The Bible tells us that that servant got up and went and looked, and he came back and he said, I see nothing. Okay, do you know what Elijah did? Elijah said, okay, that's it, let's go on. Nope, wait, we're not done. The Bible tells us that Elijah got down and he prayed again. And when he prayed again, he sent the servant out and he said, you go see what you see out there and let me know if you see that rain coming. The servant went and came back. Nope. Sorry, Elijah, I don't see anything. Elijah, that's two times. So you know what happened? Elijah prayed again. If you read in the book of James, it actually uses those words, and Elijah prayed again. So Elijah prayed a third time. The man went out, same result. Elijah prayed a fourth time. The man went, same result. A fifth time, same result. A sixth time, same result. But you know what? Elijah prayed the seventh time. And when he sent that servant out, do you know what the scripture said? It said, and it came to pass at the seventh time, verse 44. He said, that servant come back and he said, behold. He said, I see a little cloud out over the sea like a man's hand. What he seen was he seen the rain cloud coming. Elijah did not stop on the first prayer. According to that teaching, Elijah should have gave up because he didn't have faith. But do you know what Elijah did? Elijah prayed again. And Elijah prayed again. And the Bible said on the seventh time, that servant said, here comes the rain. Hallelujah to God. Okay, I want to give you an example out of the New Testament. That's one out of the Old Testament. And we could read other examples, but I'm giving you two examples today. First one was the Old Testament, a mighty man of God named Elijah, a powerful man from the Old Testament. Now, Let's look in the New Testament, and I'm going to read out of 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, okay? Now, the Bible tells us here in 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, the Apostle Paul is telling us about something that he has that is a thorn in the flesh, is what he calls it. I don't know if it was something physical, something emotional. I don't know what it was, but it was something that the Apostle Paul wanted, you know. Maybe it was just, uh, maybe it was a, uh, it could have been simple, something as simple as maybe he had, um, you know, I don't really know, maybe arthritis. Maybe he had a problem, as I said, maybe, a, uh, you know, something in his mind. He had something that he couldn't get out of his mind and, and, and it was bothering him. Maybe it, was a, maybe it was something in his shoulder. Maybe he had a shoulder pain. I don't know what it was, but he said this is some sort of an affliction that Paul, it was bothering the Apostle Paul, and he wanted the Lord to remove that from him. He wanted him to heal him in that area, whether it would be a physical healing or a spiritual healing or a, um, you know, a mental healing of something, a battling in, in his mind, whatever it was. 
But the Bible said Paul went to the Lord to try to get that taken away. Now notice what he said here. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 8. He said, for this thing, for this particular thing, that's what he said here, for this thing I besought or uh, sought the Lord three times. I sought the Lord. I asked the Lord. I went before the Lord. I begged before the Lord. I pleaded before the Lord. There's different meanings of that word besought three times that it might depart from me. So the, so the Apostle Paul, he didn't say, Lord, take that away from me. And then the Lord the Lord said, you know, maybe no. Or he said, maybe he just didn't leave him. And Apostle Paul gave up and said, okay, that's it. Okay, Paul didn't pray two times. And then he said, well, I don't guess he's going to heal me. The Bible said Paul sought the Lord three times. Okay. And then the Lord answered him. But Paul knew, one of the great men out of the New Testament knew, it's okay to ask the Lord a second time. It's okay to pray for the uh, pray for something for a third time. If you don't get the answer you're looking for, if you don't, if you haven't seen God move, don't hesitate to pray again. So today, I'm telling you today, I believe there's a lot of people out there that's watching this, that maybe you've got something you're praying about. Maybe there's something you're praying for. Maybe you're praying for your friends, your family, a loved one, your kids, your job, uh, you know, a situation, you know, maybe it's financial, maybe it's physical, maybe it's spiritual. It can be, it can be so many different things. Maybe it's, maybe it's for your community. Okay. The thing is, is don't give up. Just continue like Elijah. See, Paul said, I'm going to seek the Lord a second time. I'm going to seek the Lord a third time. Paul didn't say my faith, that my faith is a problem and I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to quit. No, Paul sought the Lord again and he sought the Lord again. Elijah sought the Lord seven times. So I can't really imagine this man telling Elijah, you don't have the faith. Go on and turning Elijah away. And again, he was he was he had some excellent books, and he was a mighty man of God in the early uh, mid in the early late eighteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds. He was a mighty man of God. Okay, and I love reading about his experiences, but I don't agree with people on everything sometimes, and this is one area I do not agree with that on. You know, just because a person comes back that second night, that does not mean they don't have faith. See, I believe Elijah had faith, and I had believe Paul had faith, but I also believe where the Word of God teaches. If you have a request, let your request be made known unto God. And the Bible said that him that seeketh and him that ask God, you will find, and he will answer you. So today, if you've got a problem, if you've got something you're praying about, keep praying, keep believing, and keep hanging on to God. And if it had, God hadn't worked it out yet, don't stop now. See, do like these men of God in the Old Testament, in the New Testament. Just keep praying. Keep asking God. God, I believe you. I know you haven't done it yet, but God, I believe you're going to do it. Now, that's a teaching from the Word of God. Continue to knock. Continue to knock. Continue to knock. And then the Lord will open that door for you. Remember, God loves you. God bless you. And if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button, and we'll catch you on the next video.